Okay, I'm gonna tell you all about the most important Spider-Man character that you've never heard of. Goron. Spider-Man! Okay, so you take Goro and the word moron, you fuse them together, and you get this weird guy, Goron. Meeting Goron is a life-changing experience, so if you've never seen the episode of the 1981 Spider-Man with Goron in it, prepare to enter the Goron Age. In 1981, Marvel said, why just make one Spider-Man show when we could make two? So there was Spider-Man and his amazing friends, and then the less popular Spider-Man and no one. Obviously, Spider-Man with no friends would have been more popular if more people had seen the Goron episode. This show simply being called Spider-Man made it a little hard to distinguish from other Spider-Man series, so when it was released on DVD, they called it Spider-Man 5000. Spider-Man 5000. Oh yeah, it's super clear to me what that is. Doesn't make it sound like a far future Spider-Man series or anything. So this absolutely stunning piece of television history that introduced the world to Goron was the 12th episode of the 81 Spider-Man, the ABCs of Doom. Doctor Doom is a moron, but he's no Goron. This was Doctor Doom's third appearance in the show. His other two episodes before this both involved him trying to be elected Master of the World by the UN. We shall now vote for a new world leader. I nominate Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is Master of the World. Yes, seriously, this nonsense plot was something worth trying twice. Go! Go! Doctor Doom, Master of the World! Now that I am the appointed leader of all seven of Earth's continents. I believe the UN is still batting a big old goose egg on the amount of times they've elected a Master of the World. Unless I've really missed something. In my first action as Dictator of the World, I abolished all newspapers and TV. Don't blame me, I voted for Kodos. The first time Doom tried this, he used mind control on people in the UN to vote him in, and then the second time, he just replaced people in the UN with a bunch of Vote for Doom robots. I'm afraid you've bombed out! So, yeah, I really don't know how Dr. Doom thought any of this was going to work out. He's just going to go to people and say, Hey, you watched that UN thing, right? I've been elected the total world leader. You have to listen to me now. Please? Really now, he had no plan for holding the world at all. Both times, all it took was for one guy to come in and say, Uh, nah, you're not world leader, and that flushed his Master of the World title down the toilet. You will obey me as your new leader. DOOM! Honestly, when I first saw the ABCs of Doom, I was expecting the plot to be Doom goes to the UN to tell them if he could perfectly recite the alphabet, they had to elect him Master of the World. But no, Doom ended up with something much more precious this time. You haven't lost your touch, have you, Goron? The last time we met, I let you get away, Doctor Doom. I won't make that mistake this time. Yep, that's the introduction to Goron. Y'all know Goron, right? Cause this episode certainly acts like you do. I thought for sure this Goron must be from the comics, the way the episode just drops him on you like you should understand who this total Goron is, but absolutely not. This is the one and only time Goron has ever appeared in anything. So, just within the first seconds of this episode, we are hit with Goron having some kind of elaborate, never-to-be-explained backstory with Doctor Doom. Goron probably voted against him at the UN at least once, and also Goron's weird eye powers. He can do... whatever he wants, seemingly, with them. All he's gotta do is flip over to some other eye color, and what happens next is the will of Goron. It's true, then. You can teleport objects. If you're wondering if any kind of explanation about Goron's eye powers is coming, well, of course not. All you need to know is... 
It's Goron. And now to send you to oblivion. Don't be a fool, Goron. I need your special talents. Why should I help you? For half the world. Half the world. And just like that, Goron heel turns on the world. He now teams up with Doctor Doom, even though he has apparently battled him many times in the past. You can say many things about Goron, but you can't say he has strong convictions. Help convince mankind to trust me one last time. No, you can't possibly think mankind is that stupid, Doctor Doom. You were pretty blatantly evil. And Dr. Doom's been elected master of the world. Naturally. Meanwhile, Spidey is still swinging around with his head and his web in the clouds. Jeez, guess J. Jonah Jameson was so desperate to print something he's resorting to graffiti. Officer Harrigan, undercover squad. Thanks. You just helped a purse snatcher get away. So, the first thing they show Spider-Man doing in this episode is failing. Well, after the fall of Goron, what should we expect? Do we really need an undercover unit for purse snatchers, though? You fooled me. I mean, you really look like a bum. Not all bums are crooks, Spidey. Oh. You're doing a great job, but keep up the good work. Spider-Man in this series is voiced by Ted Schwartz, who was originally cast as Rodimus Prime in Season 3 of The Transformers, but was replaced by Dick Gautier. Schwartz had already recorded lines for The Five Faces of Darkness, though, and a couple accidentally got left in, like during the recap of Part 1 in Part 2. This planet is quarantined. Nobody comes, nobody goes until we find Cup, Spike, and Magnus. This planet is quarantined. Nobody comes, nobody goes until we find Cup, Spike, and Magnus. Then we'll trash every Decepticon in the galaxy. Then we'll trash every Decepticon in the galaxy. And a couple of lines used the Schwartz takes accidentally in part three. This isn't a planet. I don't know what it is. Gross. Dr. Doom! I knew he was my kind of guy. He's the kind of guy who fails upwards. Dr. Doom has invited the world's leaders to Latveria in order to demonstrate his most recent scientific discovery. Yeah, sure, he tried to take over the world through a confusing vote a couple of times, but why not send world leaders to go see what he's up to? What could go wrong? Even the country of Texas is attending, I guess. Ah, that new factory is very impressive. The new factory is beautiful, as long as one does not look too closely. Doom, I don't want to say you waste your time on pointless endeavors, but I have no way to finish this sentence. Speaking of pointless... Dr. Doom is making a robot of my son. Doom, you did the robot thing. It's boring already. Now here's what's not boring at all. Giant vegetables. How is this possible? One word. Goron. That's right. Who makes the vegetables grow? Goron. Oh, what can't Goron do? We grow them big in Texas, but my hat's off to you, sir. He even humbled the Texan stereotype. That's the power of Goron. What was you so all fired up to tell us? I only wanted to tell you how much we all love our leader. Long live Dr. Doom. Thank you, Johan. Doom built a robot just so he can pretend he has a friend? That's some level of sad he's on. I have a friend. I have Goron. We are not friends. We are simply colleagues. Ouch, Goron. Ouch. By the way, if you expected any kind of follow-up on Johan and his robot replacement in this episode, you'd better lower those expectations because that's it. You do get a follow-up to Johan and his plight in the next Doctor Doom story five episodes from now, though. Because, oddly, the Doctor Doom episodes have a semi-serialized nature to them, which is very unexpected from a 1981 series. It's not amazingly thrilling or anything, but if you're invested in the continuing saga of Johan, you have to watch multiple episodes. 
Everyone digs into the wonderful giant feast of doom. Raw vegetables. Though, the French woman seems to have a block of cheese. I don't know how Goron grew that. Also, Texas man wanted to have a couple of slices of bread to go with his giant carrot meal. All this giant food and I can't take my mask off to eat any of it. I am a tragic villain. But just what do you want for these discoveries of yours? Nothing. A magnanimous! Have you forgotten what Dr. Doom did at the UN? Oh, did he do something at the UN? Jeez, it's almost like it was silly of you to come to Dr. Doom's pad. My friends, do you remember Goron? Who doesn't? I mean, that's the theme of the episode. Goron, it seems the American doubts our sincerity. Eat. Well said, Goron. Well said. So yeah, Goron's got mind control in his eye power Rolodex as well. The other thing Doctor Doom did before. Losing a lot of respect for Doctor Doom here, and gaining a whole lot of respect for Goron. Goron even starts selling out venues for his eye power shows. Uh, how quickly do these plants grow? Will you be going to the space center? Uh, do you spell Goron with one R or two? Okay, that's funny, and I mean, everyone would want to know how to spell Goron. Look, it, it's unbelievable. Dr. Doom may be the greatest man who ever lived. Dr. Doom didn't make the food grow, it was Goron, you moron! I guess giant oversized food is the true path to ruling the world. This stuff is excellent! Splendid! There's gotta be something in the food. Even Goron can't escape the trolls. He's so beyond us, but he's still relatable. Look out, it, it's Spider-Man! Does Spider-Man even know Goron? Did they have any superhero meetings about fighting Doom before the heel turn? Oh, who am I kidding? Of course Spider-Man knows Goron! Everybody knows Goron! Spider-Man and his amazing friends! <laughs> Why did I think I was safe just because I walked into another room? <laughs> These plants eat insects. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Goron. Spiders aren't insects. So, yeah, Goron seriously tries to kill Spider-Man with a mushroom. Pretty ridiculous, but I can say I haven't seen anyone try that one before. I mean, as far as Spider-Man goes, I guess I have seen Darkwing Duck almost killed by a mushroom. Oh, and Mario. You know what, this isn't original at all. Get out of here, Goron. I'll never eat another mushroom again, I promise. Mmm, mushrooms. Ah, shit. The CO2 gas from the fire extinguisher should freeze these plants solid. It freezes everything except me somehow. Goron is now having a blast over at NASA where he's convinced them to do these launches to help grow the giant food. If you're thinking that doesn't really make sense, don't worry, they say the same thing in the episode. I'm still not certain how our new space platform can help feed the world, but NASA is anxious to do whatever it can. We love sending shit out into space without having any idea of why we're doing it, though. This space platform does end up getting launched nine episodes from now in Countdown to Doom. Even though NASA probably should have been tipped off here that Doom and Goron were gonna sabotage it, and that's of course exactly what happened. And of course, once this plan started working, Dr. Doom ran right over to the UN to declare himself the world leader. I just hope we can get everything locked in before the platform's launched. Just a moment, we're locked in! What is this? Why did I do that? Now to see what that moron Goron is up to. Oh, he said it! That Spider-Man's so sassy.
I was expecting you, Spider-Man. Can't fight it. It's pushing me. Good thing Goron didn't just do the explosion eye beam. Otherwise, he'd have won. I'll just leave Spider-Man in this escapable situation. Even if he gets out, he'll never know the joy of making fruit and vegetables grow large. That's a pleasure only for me, Goron. I love the way this big lummox lumbers around. Warning, this is a restricted area. I warn you after you enter, kind of useless. Done. Big job, can't believe it only took this guy three weeks to go in and turn that screw. The secret launch codes for the space platform, I need them. Well, of course, the maintenance man who turns screws has all the top secret codes. If we could cast absolutely anyone as Goron, I guess it'd be Tor Johnson, or George the Animal Steel as Tor Johnson as Goron. <laughs> I was just starting to like it. Gross. Connect this computer to the Defense Department Strike Force computer. We're now tied in with all army. Good job. I've never been good at giving proper praise. Every nuclear missile in the air, on the ground, and at sea is ready to launch. Oh, of course. I should have known that giant vegetables were the perfect way to get missile launch codes. The world has five minutes to proclaim Dr. Doom its ruler. Please gather at the UN to hold a vote on it. Wrong again, Bright Eyes. I should have said turn around, Bright Eyes, but that song doesn't come out until a couple more years. The game's over, Goron. <laughs> You need glasses! I probably do, actually. All these eye lasers can't be great for my retina. <laughs> Prepare to teleport the guidance system. I did it. You haven't done anything, Doom! It's been all Goron! In fact, the majority of the runtime of this episode at this point has been Goron. This should have been called Goron and his amazing colleagues. No! His own rays changed him back to his real form. What? A reason was Goron's real form? And why does Spider-Man even know that this is Goron's real form? Did Goron get to choose whatever he wanted as his other form, and he chose just a slightly bloated up version of himself? Yeah, sure, he's got some muscle, but he's also got a gut there. He chose this? I don't need to go with first class or anything when economy will do. <laughs> what are you, Goron? Like, seriously. If he could have been absolutely anything, Goron should have been a Goron, right? Goron the Goron? He could have been Goron Goron! Come on! So... What happened to Goron after this? We will never know. You can't leave it on that. We need some Goron Age comic books or something. I can't override it without the code word that ball guy programmed in. With an ego like Dr. Doom's, there's only one word he would think could save the world. D. O. No. Dr. Doom is not that big of a Goron, Spidey. O. Doom. The reports of Dr. Doom's genius have been greatly exaggerated. But, 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 how? How? Okay, Goron, put this in as the code. D. O. You seriously aren't just making it Doom, are you? You didn't let me finish. O. M. I've made a huge mistake. It's like this everywhere, JJ. All of Doom's giant food became worthless after two days. Drat! Now where am I gonna get an apple? Just another of Dr. Doom's hollow promises. Just like the promises of certain photographers. We had a date last night, Peter Parker. I'm leaving you for Goron. Oh. 
seriously, if you've got a Disney Plus account, I implore you to go watch the Goron episode. Goron is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. He's had some kind of side adventure fighting Doctor Doom, but all it took was for Doom saying, let's join up, for him to completely throw away all his ideals and turn his random eye beams into the greatest evil ever known. Giant vegetables. Why Goron was really a raisin and why Goron apparently chose to look like that, well... We will never know. I just have so many unanswered questions about Goron. I guess he did leave me wanting more. <laughs> So fake, that toy is gonna break. Fain us all let me down. You need to be around. Grab that chocolate pizza. I leave her like it cause I want to fail us so fail us. Bring a mortar comedy. Fail us so fail us. And animation movie. Fail us so fail us. What we really is so fun. Fail us so fail us. What's your opinion about? Hey, Goron, what if you were just good again? I never thought of it that way, Spider-Man. Okay. That's all I had to do?